Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanasa Farms, specialty in heirloom livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So today we are going to start talking about genetics and we're kicking it old school today. We're going all the way back to high school to learn about some very interesting genetics and we're gonna be talking about dominant and recessive genes and how they affect us and how they affect our animals. So stay tuned to find out more. getting ready to start talking about dominant and recessive genes and this is very important we have to understand this this has effects on things like wool color and it has effects on things like horns um, but the real reason we're learning this is because in the next few episodes we're gonna be learning about line breeding and inbreeding and all kinds of recessive genetic traits that we don't want in our flock like spider gene and dwarfism and all kinds of other problems so before we can talk about the stuff that really, really affects you, we need to talk about the stuff that kind of affects you. So when we have our mom, we have our mom sheep, and we have our dad sheep, and mom and dad both have a specific gene type, and we'll explain this in a little bit. They give one of these genes, we call them an allele, they give one of these to their baby and baby develops its own gene type. And so what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about these things right here, these genes. We're going to talk about what they mean um, and how they work. So there are dominant and recessive genes. I'm going to use the term gene and allele. Uh, interchangeably I'll try to make it make as much sense as I can but an animal's gene type it can look lots of different ways so in this case we're gonna be talking about polled and horned animals um, so just for example a horned uh, animal a horned goat we'll say so a horned goat a horned goat his genetic type looks just like this. And then we have that goat. I'm not a very good goat drawer, so stay, just hang out with me. He has horns. So this is our genotype. And this is our phenotype. Genotype is what we have, what our genes actually say, and phenotype is what we look like. And in this case, it looks like we have horns. So this translates into this. Each one of these are called an allele. All right. So each one of these is called an allele. And as you recall, we get one of these from mom and one of these from dad. So now let's talk about a polled, goat, a polled goat. So polled is hornless. That's just a term we use. Hornless. Keyword there is less. So we have a polled goat. Now a polled goat his genotype can look like this, or it can look like this. Um, and in this case, he has both dominant polled alleles, and in this case, he has a polled allele and a recessive horned allele. So both of these are going to give us, this is our genotype. Again, what does our gene say we have? And this is our phenotype. And in this case, this happy fella is going to be hornless. No horns. So what's going on here? We see that he has the horned allele. Why are we not seeing it? Well, the reason we're not seeing it is because of this right here, dominant. Dominant alleles always mask 
or generally, there are exceptions, but almost always mask the recessive allele. And we will usually use these, we'll usually say genes. We'll usually say dominant gene, recessive gene. But in this case, even though he has this horned allele in this genotype, in his phenotype, we don't see it manifest itself. So always remember, dominant masks recessive. That is very important to remember as we roll forward. So dominant always masks, always hides the recessive. Always, 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 always. So in this case, we have, let's say, we want to know what our percentage is of having a baby with horns or without horns. So I'm gonna make here what is called a Punnett square. So on this side, we're gonna have dad, and on this side, we're gonna have mom, and we're gonna draw them out. So let's say that dad has horns and mom doesn't. So we're gonna say dad has horns. Now, in order to have horns, you have to have both recessive alleles. And we know that because we know that as soon as I make one of these, as soon as I make one of these dominant, guess what? You're not gonna see it anymore, right? It's gonna be hidden. So dad has horns. That's his phenotype. Dad looks like this. Okay, mom is pulled, and we're gonna make her look like this. So mom, still pulled, even though she carries the recessive horn gene, because again, remember, we have genotype, phenotype. Her phenotype is no horn, dad phenotype is horn. So now mom is going to give in one case, she'll give her dominant pulled, dominant pulled. I'm pulling from here, pulling from here. H and H. So these are our possible combinations of babies. We have mom and dad have a baby together. Mom has a, both a dominant pulled and a recessive horn to give. Dad only has recessive horn to give. And this is what we end up with. What we end up with is a 100% chance that that baby is gonna be a carrier of that recessive gene. So we have a 100% chance that that baby is at least going to have that recessive gene. But you can also see that we've got a 50% chance that that baby is going to be pulled, because remember, pulled hides that recessive, that dominant hides that recessive you have a 50% chance that that baby is actually going to carry that dominant gene and actually be hornless. So very interesting things can happen. Um, in this case, let's look at this. This happens sometimes and people, people call me and say, what in the heck is going on? Sometimes we have two pulled parents. Sometimes mom and dad both are hornless. They both carry that recessive gene. It's hiding in there, but we can't see it until they breed. And in this case, dad carries the pulled gene, mom carries the pulled gene, but oh, guess what? They both carry that recessive gene. So now what happens? Well, let's see. Uh-oh, there it is. We have a 25% chance that that baby is going to be horned. Even though you couldn't see it on either one of them, their phenotype was they were hornless, their genotype said otherwise, and it was hidden in there. And now we have a 75% chance that that baby is going to carry 
that recessive gene and a 25% chance that that baby is actually going to have horns. So that can happen. You can have two parents that are polled and they can have a horned baby. Now, can I have two horned parents? Can I have two horned parents that have a pulled baby? Work through this with me. So I've got two horned parents and we already know that they have to look like this. So now what happens? Well, dad's got this, mom's got this. They only have recessive genes to give. So we have a 100% chance that the baby will be a carrier of the recessive gene and a 100% chance that the baby will be horned. So this works um, in multiple different ways. Um, just for the sheep, I don't want my sheep people to feel left out here. In the case of sheep, luckily I'm really bad at drawing, so we can use my, my sheep and my goats as the same thing. White wool is dominant. So let's take a look at that. So wool. White wool is dominant. Black wool is recessive. And we're not going to go through we're not going to go through all of these all over again, but what you'll see uh, when you'll see this manifest itself is when people try to crossbreed. So if you get, if you're a breeder and let's say you raise dorsets that are always solid white and then you have a natural color sheep, let's say you have a really nice uh, hamp and our hamp, our dorset up here um, is a true dorset and it carries both dominant white genes. Um, and then we got a hamp down here, a nice black natural colored hamp and that hamp carries both recessive genes. Now we know that in order for that black to show because black's recessive for that phenotype to show for that black phenotype to show it has to be both it has to have both recessive genes. So what happens when we breed these two together? So when we breed our dorset with our black sheep we get genes that look like this. Yep, that's right, right? Yep. So you have a 100% chance, you got the dominant gene in every single one because that's all the dorset had to give and you have a 100% chance of having the recessive gene in every single one because that's all the black sheep had to give. So we have a 100% chance of white color. But we also have a 100% chance of black genetics. We have a 0% chance of black color. But we know that the baby is going to carry both the dominant and recessive. So now here's where it gets interesting. So now you got that breeder that has this fantastic looking dorset that really has a hemp parent. And its, it's genotype looks like this. And now they say, eh, I'm going to breed. That works so well that I'm now going to breed this white sheep back into another hamp again. Now what do we got? Well now we've got a 50% chance that that baby is going to have black wool. 50%. 50% black wool black color, 50% white color. Uh, 
and a hundred percent chance of the black color jean. All right, so this is genetics um, in a nutshell. This is our recessive and our dominant genes in a nutshell. And it's important for you to understand this because as we roll forward, and you can probably already see where we're going with this, um, here we're talking about color and horns, but as we roll forward, we're gonna be talking about genetic variances that are bad, like spider gene and things like that. And we're gonna be showing and drawing out some trees and showing how as you continue to back breed in uh, these things that are lurking in the background that you can't see, these hidden, these hidden genes, because that dominant one hides it, this is always there, whether you like it or not, and eventually you're gonna put yourself in a position where it's gonna manifest itself. So that is it. I know I just threw a ton of information at you. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, let us know. I am Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock.